Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. We are starting a plant chores vlog. What I wanna start with is watering this area here. I have a bunch of plants in this area and a couple of them are Hoyas that need to be retreated for the mites. So I'm gonna do that and show you kind of what that looks like because I've had a lot of questions on how I am handling the flat mites on my Hoya because <laughs> I'm pretty certain that a lot of my Hoya have them. So yeah, I'm just gonna show you my little flat mite routine while I water all of these. Okay, so I give them all an initial water just to get the soil wet to begin with. And then I fill up my little, little watering can with my systemic. This is SNS 209. I have shown this so many times on my channel, but it's one of my favorite products. You know how beauty gurus have their like holy grail products <laughs> that they will always buy, they will always swear by. Well, that's one of mine because it is just such a good product. Um, it does such a good job of keeping my collection spider mite free, which I had some questions on how I keep my collection pest free and like sort of what my pest routine is. And unless I'm actively finding pests, the only thing that I do to prevent them at this point is systemic and spacing them out so that they're not all like encroaching on each other's space because when all of the plants are touching each other, it makes it a lot easier for bugs to travel from plant to plant. Another thing you can do to prevent pests or like notice infestations faster is to keep the leaves of your plants clean, which is something that I really <laughs> fall behind on a lot. But if I notice that a plant is like super, super dirty, I'll make a mixture of water and a couple squirts of like lemon juice and I'll get a microfiber cloth like this one, it has, uh, it's just like a no lint cloth and then I'll just wipe it down, like dab it into the liquid and then wipe down the leaf. That's definitely very helpful and keeps the leaves nice and shiny. Um, and it also keeps them dust free and you know, you're spending time looking at the plants and spending time with them. So you're probably gonna notice if you see any webbing or anything like that a lot easier if you're spending time looking at each individual leaf and cleaning them. Plus I think there are certain pests that are like attracted to the dust or something because it like helps them hide. I don't really know. I don't have anything to back that up per se. <laughs> but I just know that if you clean your leaves, it really does help prevent pests. So I just go through and pour this in just a little bit into each little pot and then I wait for them to drain out. And then another thing, I keep thinking of more things to do to prevent pests. <laughs> Um, what you can also do is keep your plant surfaces clean and dust free and just debris free. So as you can see, it's not like that dirty, but there is just like stuff, dirt, etc., on my shelf. It is kind of stained from like the terracotta leaking through. I don't really care much about this shelf to begin with, so it doesn't matter a ton to me. But what I do, since it's right next to the sink, I'm able to just stack all of these and move them off and then slide this right over the sink and then I just dust everything in. Sometimes I'll use an all-purpose cleaner if it's like really dirty, but I'm not going to do that today because it's not so bad. It's just a little bit of debris. As you can see, I'm putting these saucers on in a zigzag formation and that is just to prevent the plants from being right on top of each other. I don't like when my leaves touch, so this is a really great way to make sure that happens. If you wanna do something like this in your, you know, in your collection, I do this here, and I do it on a larger scale in my plant room, and it's really perfect to keep them away from each other. And I don't know if any of you noticed, but I finally installed curtains in this kitchen window. Every winter, I complain. <laughs> about how the sun comes in so strong in the winter because my big tree doesn't have any leaves. And finally I did it and I'm really happy I did it. It was like one of the best things I've done because this kitchen or my house in general, like at night can sometimes feel like a fishbowl because it, it. I have huge picture windows, which I love because if you're gonna live like surrounded by a forest, 
you'd hope that you'd have good windows. Um, so I'm happy about it, but at the same time, I was like, wow. And everybody, if they come to my house at night, can see everything I'm doing. And I would have no idea if there was somebody standing right in front of me outside. If it's dark, and that really freaked me out. So I was beyond scared straight when I started thinking about it more. <laughs> so I just decided to put those up, finally. And they were already curtains that I had. I just ended up hemming them, which I was avoiding because I hate hemming curtains. It's just like such a monotonous thing to do, but it's easy and I know how to sew. So like, let's use our brain here, Becca. <laughs> okay, so I have to do some grooming on this plant. It looks really bad, but it was just thirsty. It's, it's gonna be fine, but I did let it get thirsty for a bit too long and there's some leaves that I should probably just cut off. I'm kind of going through this in my entire collection right now because I was pretty irresponsible and didn't do a ton of watering over the Christmas season. So I'm kind of paying for it now in the form of cutting off more leaves than I would want because yikes, I've had to cut off a lot of leaves. It's just something that happens and unfortunately the plants pay the price but they always grow back. You know, as long as you're not letting them get past the point of no return, they will grow back. This one does look pretty bad, but it's come back from way worse. This is a plant that's had spider mites, I think like twice, and it always came back. This plant I have been sort of rehabbing, not really even rehabbing it because it was never like gonna die or anything, but I just fell out of love with my green string of hearts, and it was like really, really, really long and stringy, and I just didn't like the way it looked. And a bunch of people told me to just like wrap it up around the top and it'll like root, which I knew that, but I just never like wanted to do it, but I finally did it. And the top looks like super full cause it's all like wrapped up. It hasn't rooted necessarily, but it has put off like, this is new, 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 this is new. You get the idea. It's putting off some cute growth. So she gets to stay, I'll let her, live in my collection and I actually am gonna put this on my green wall because I need plants to put up there and it's already in the perfect pot for up there so I'm just gonna put it up there and hope for the best for it I think it'll be fine it'll probably be a better environment than in here actually so anyway oh also this we're doing propagation updates I guess so this is a splendid that I cut off my plant I don't remember why I cut it off I think I just wanted to try to root it individually. And I put it in water just because I knew that it would root in water. Um, I am wanting to buy some more sphagnum moss. And I said in a previous video that I wasn't going to buy sphagnum moss anymore. And a bunch of people commented, well, and the reason was because it wasn't very eco. And a bunch of people commented and they're like, I think you're getting spag confused with peat moss. And ever since that conversation, I've been like, oh, did I? I don't really know, but maybe I did. I, honestly, I don't know. But the point is, I don't buy peat moss anymore. I mean, unless it's for like my garden, and it's so hard to avoid peat moss in my garden because all like outdoor mixes pretty much have peat moss unless I was to mix my own, which this year I think I'm gonna try because my soil last year outside sucked and I think was a big reason why my garden also sucked. One of my friends online posted a recipe for what she does in her garden, so I'm gonna follow that this year and see if I have any improvements. Anyway, I'm wanting to buy some sphagnum moss because I'd like to start propagating my plants again, and this is one that I'd probably put in spag before I'd put it in soil because it does have some pretty cute water roots, but I think I'd prefer to have some like soil roots because soil roots are what grows out of sphagnum moss. Um, Cause it's like, it's just different. Water roots and, and soil roots are different types of roots. And sometimes water roots have a hard time transitioning from the water substrate to the soil substrate because they kind of have to regrow a new root system or like, I don't think they transform the roots. I really don't know, but they have to go undergo some sort of transition under the pot. And I prefer to just not have my plants do that. I find that when I root my plants in like cocoa peat or spag, they do take off a lot faster when I put them in soil as compared to propagating in water. And that's a big reason why I kind of moved away from propagating in water. But propagating in water is a very passive way of propagating. Like you literally just put it in water and fill the water when it evaporates or like change it out once or twice a month. Like honestly, it's, it's very easy. 
um, but again the transition to soil is a lot harder it has a growth point too which is pretty exciting so maybe i've just made an entire new plant i'm pretty excited about it so that one is doing great and this one was given to me by someone at um a book signing tyler and it has a baby now and it's so cute i really like having this in water it might stay in water forever until we get like more babies i don't i really don't know but i just like the way that it looks in here so we're gonna keep it in there okay so now for my flat mite routine i have this spray bottle and I, oh, let me go get the actual product. Okay, I get a lot of questions on which specific sulfur I use for my plants, and it is this one by Bonide. Bonide is just a great plant company. They have a lot of great pest prevention products, so usually if it's Bonide, it's probably gonna be pretty good. But what I did was the ratios on here were kind of confusing, and whenever you're trying out a new pest prevention method, please, please, please do your due diligence and open up this back panel and read this, like read all of the risks. I honestly didn't do a very good job of that because I was using a product called Eight for a really long time and someone commented and said that it's not supposed to be used for indoors and I had no idea. And the first Eight that I bought, it wasn't the concentrate, it was just like the pre-mixed bottle. It had a strong smell, but it wasn't all that bad. And then I bought a concentrate of it and the concentrate has just like a very toxic smell. Um, and it is chemicals. It's not like a natural based insecticide. Uh, so I guess that makes sense, but I don't know. Anyway, somebody told me that in the comment section of one of my videos and I was like, oh my gosh, that is not great, but it's fine. Like I'm fine. My dogs are fine. Everything's fine. But yeah, just make sure that you're reading the labels because I thought I did and apparently I didn't. I missed something. So definitely read that. But anyway, when you read the label, it'll also tell you because this is like, a, this is a powder. What I've always seen people do is dilute it in water. So I needed to know the ratio to use. So I looked at the bottle and I was like, this is confusing because it's for gallons and this is not a gallon. So I had to do some math and my rough estimate of how much sulfur I needed per my 25 fluid ounce bottle was about a teaspoon. I feel like that might even be a little bit too much, but I've been doing it for like three or four months now and I haven't had any issues. So I think that we're okay. Anyway, so I just put the powder in the water and I shake it up because if you don't like continue to shake it, the powder will all settle to the bottom. So it's kind of like your chocolate milk. Just gotta shake it up. So I've got my two flat mite queens in the, in the sink here. And what I do is you can see there's like white splash marks. It looks like water marks, but that's actually the sulfur. So you have to wipe that off the previous treatment before you add on the new treatment. So it's pretty water soluble. I just give the plant a hard spray. And as you can see, it is best to do this on watering day because it's really hard not to get the soil wet while you're spraying down the plant. So just like a hot tip for you in that. Um, and then look how easy this is. I'm shaking up my bottle and then I just start spraying and that's literally it. I spray as much as I can, like every crevice. And you can see the water droplets are white and that just is the product. So I just do that all over both of the plants. So I'm gonna leave it in the sink for it to dry. In another two weeks, I'll do the exact same thing. And I've been doing that for a couple of months. And as you can see, there is new growth occurring. Um, I haven't been as consistent with spraying them as I should be. So I feel like they have come back in some ways because I've noticed some of the growth looks a little questionable. If your Hoya has all the right conditions and it's trying to put off new growth, but it keeps falling off or it's not growing at all and it has the right conditions, there's a really good chance you have flat mites. And really the only way to confirm that you have flat mites is through like a macro lens or a little microscope because they are that tiny. I didn't actually go through and like confirm that certain plants had it. I just noticed that after I treated them one time, I started seeing new growth that was sticking around. And then I was like, okay, <laughs> they definitely had flat mites and I didn't know. So that is my flat mite routine. Actually, that's just my entire pest prevention routine as a whole. So hope that was 
educational and helpful for you because honestly, we've come a long way from the my spider mites are trying to kill my collection video, which was a very big mess of me running around my house, freaking out and getting burnt out and crying because my entire collection basically had spider mites. And that doesn't really happen to me anymore. I'm able to identify it really fast if my plant does have a pest. Um, and I use my, uh, where is it? I use my SNS 209, use my sulfur fungicide, and we are good. All right, all the plants are replaced. They look so cute. They still need to perk up from their watering, but they look really good. So I have some plants in the plant room that look a little questionable. Like they have a lot of um, extra foliar nectar on them. And this is something that is like relatively normal with philodendron, but I have heard that if they have a lot, like an abundance, then that could be a sign of a pest. I think specifically maybe flat mites, but don't quote me on that because this is something that I'm recently discovering and actually taking the time to look into because it's taken me some time to get to the point where I could be like, hmm, I noticed that something's going on. Let's figure out what it is. <laughs> Sometimes I just, I notice things and I'm like, okay, I'm making the observation. And then it takes me like a month to get the, the gumption. I don't know, like the, the need to fix it. So, wow, that new leaf looks like it's going to be really big i am excited about that yeah she's got some damage from that like nectar that extra floral nectar as you can see like right here and it has like hardened and crystallized so i don't really know what the deal is with that but i am gonna wipe it off oh yeah look at this one can you see hold on let me bring it closer she's like a sun catcher with all her dots yeah, that's not good. Microfiber cloth. Let's prepare the nectar. Ah. Wow, this is really not making me look very cool. I wanted to do those things where you like twist and pop it off. Got it loosened. All right, let, let's pretend, let's pretend. I'm gonna have to have like mostly off so that I can. I'm actually gonna use the systemic water because you can actually apply SNS 209 as a foliar spray. I don't know if the dilution is different with that, but it's not gonna hurt anything, so. Okay, got my little liquid here and my microfiber cloth. So I normally just stick two fingers in it like this. And then I just go to town, front and back of the leaves. Oops, okay. Be gentle. What is wrong with me right now? Like why did I just, what just happened? And this is a velvety leaf, like it's not like the most velvety leaf. Ooh, this leaf is actually looking, I don't even know how this leaf is still alive. It's like snapped. Did that just happen? No, it's definitely like bruised or scarred over. That is weird. <laughs> My green chef got delivered and I'm standing here in a robe in the middle of the day, wiping down a plant. How crazy. Do you think I look? Honestly, I think that they're used to it at this point. What do they expect? There's a greenhouse out there. I don't know. I really shouldn't be embarrassed, but that's a good reason why we have curtains, right? I have them open right now because it's a really dark day and I need sunlight. <laughs> but then stuff like that happens and I know that they can see me and I can see them and it's just, it's super awkward. I'm just gonna have to get over it. They probably have seen much weirder things, much weirder than me. Ew, okay, see, there's so much that it's like very sticky. Also, I feel it's important to say that you could definitely remove dust from your plants by just putting them in the shower or like putting them in the sink and like washing off the leaves. I just find that this is 
a little bit more effective long term like i definitely do the shower thing but if i want the plant to be shiny and like sparkling clean this is the best way to go it is super time consuming especially when you have a lot of plants so don't do all your plants in one day don't do any all don't don't do a plant chore on your entire collection in one day ever i would say <laughs> this is really easy to just like put in the refrigerator and come back to it tomorrow like you definitely don't need to do everything in one day so i've wiped off all of that extra floral nectar is that what it's called i am not feeling very confident about that name anymore i wiped it all off and hopefully she will be happy and while i'm here i'm just going to make some additional ties with the plank and this plant does need a new plank it's too big for this one but i'm gonna wait to switch anything out until this next leaf fully comes out because I just don't want to disturb it too much because it is taking a long time to actually come out which I don't love but sometimes that happens probably because it hasn't been watered in a really long time because I have severely neglected my plants in the last couple of weeks <laughs> but we're gonna water her now and I think she'll be really happy with me and maybe open up that beautiful leaf friends that is going to be the end of this video i hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me doing my pest prevention routine with me and maybe learning something new or getting a little refresher <sighs> i think days like this are really necessary and it was a good day to like get up and do things because outside you can't see it it's very gray and rainy and dark and kind of depressing so it's nice to hang out with my plants and spend time with them and just I don't know, remind myself why it is so nice to cultivate indoor plants because while outside looks terrible, <laughs> inside looks like this and it's very happy and green in here. And I'm really, I'm just having one of those days where I'm just really happy that I decided to start collecting house plants. <laughs> so mush aside, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure that you are subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss future uploads. I upload twice a week, usually Tuesdays and Fridays, so you can look out for me then. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!